your waist circumference is a strong predictor of low testosterone. So as your waist circumference increases, it can be an indicator of low testosterone. And that can happen, by the way, in men as young as 30, right? There is some research that says that that testosterone decrease isn't really as noticeable until we're in our 40s. Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. Hey, friend. Welcome back to another episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your health coach and host, Jen Trepic, always here with you every week. And I have a new voice for you. My friend Keith is joining us today. Keith, welcome officially to Salad with a Side of Fries. Thank you, Jen. I'm very excited. (laughs) <laughs> I'm excited to have you. I'm thrilled that we were able to make this work because you're in LA. I'm in New York. The magic of technology. I love it. Excellent. And it's especially fitting and why I asked if you'd be willing to join me for this is because today's episode is all in honor of Movember. Do you ever grow the mustache for Movember? The Fu Manchu for <laughs> during college. <laughs> yeah. So for those who don't know, Movember is like guys would grow a mustache and November was like men's health awareness month, I suppose, something to that effect. So we're celebrating Movember and we're going to talk about men's health today. What do you think? Let's do it. It's here for the boys. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Totally. All right. So super quick, before we get into it, we have to tell our members what they're getting this week. All right. So members, first, your recipe is for peanut butter truffles because November is also Peanut Butter Lovers Month. Not to be confused with Peanut Butter Day or whatever, like National Peanut Butter Day, which is a different day. This is Peanut Butter Lovers Month. And this recipe also works for like the healthiest holidays theme that I've had going on because you could definitely add this to your holiday dessert buffet. And they're delicious, super simple, only a few ingredients. And then I'm also sending you an article from our friends over at Levels Health. The article is called How Metabolic Health Impacts Men's Sexual Health. I know. I see it in your face. It's true. We've talked about it a little bit here before when we've done our heart health episodes, but I like this article, so I'm sending it to you guys too. So if you want this recipe or the article, make sure you're a member. You're going to go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries for just $10 a month. You get weekly recipes, a monthly article or tool like today, extra discounts from me and our partners, plus access to quarterly live Q&A sessions. It's a total deal. I know I say it every time. It's a steal (laughs) because when you take advantage of the full offerings, you're going to save far more than that $10 cost. It's seriously a no-brainer way to show yourself that your health is a priority. Plus, this membership shows your support for this podcast and this community so that we can continue to do this with you every week. All right. So remember, you are going to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries, or just click the link in the show notes because frankly, that's easier. Once you're there, you click support now, enter your email and payment info, click subscribe, and you're all set. You'll get this week's recipe for the peanut butter truffles and the article, How Metabolic Health Impacts Men's Sexual Health. I know I've got everybody's attention already. (laughs) All right. So let's start with a little bit of like general lay of the land. Okay. And I think, I don't know, maybe I'm making a giant generalization here and I probably am. And I think I almost feel like I'm putting you on the spot to speak for like all men everywhere. So I get that. (laughs) Right. (laughs) But I feel like men are really only concerned about their health if or when it relates to attracting a mate or sexual function. I think those are the dominating factors. Right. And then I suppose later in life when there's some sort of diagnosis. Right. Or at any time if there's a diagnosis. But I feel like otherwise the preventive thing only happens if it's like, you know, related to procreation in some way. That and maybe we want to keep our hair. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, fair. But I feel like that's also part of like, attracting a mate. Right. You're right. You know, that's like my Scott Galloway. Do you know Scott Galloway? Yep. Right. That's like my Scott Galloway. Everything is all about, you know, attracting a mate. What makes you more attractive? 
All right. So now that we sort of have that as the lay of the land, let's think about some general thoughts. Because when it comes to those things, a lot of times people assume that the issue is testosterone, right? Mm -hmm. So most men, many men are very concerned with their testosterone levels. The reality is that it's usually about less than 10% of sexual health concerns are related to testosterone. More than 70% of complaints are associated with cardiovascular and blood sugar health, which is frankly everything we talk about here and part of what that article is about, right? Metabolic health. Metabolic health is blood sugar and cardiovascular health and some hormonal health is in there too. But, you know, I mean, it's not as much testosterone like we think. Right, because everyone thinks testosterone deals with blood flow, but actually it's the heart, like you're saying. Right, exactly. But you're a step ahead because you know it's blood flow, right? So we'll come to that too. But so cardiovascular health, blood sugar health, hormone production, and bioavailability are what result in the changes in sexual function, urologic health, energy, and mood. So a lot of the things that we experience, and we, a lot of things that men experience with (laughs) aging are connected to these factors more so than the testosterone. And as a man ages, the fat to muscle ratio on the body is more what's connected to the testosterone, like rather than the other elements. Interesting. Right. And then the other challenge is a lot of times I think we're told that the changes that we experience are just, oh, part of aging. And so they're sort of brushed under the rug instead of actually looking at the cardiovascular health, the blood flow, and all the things that are really important. That plus, like with regards to Movember, men are kind of taught to not talk about anything related to health. Yeah. All right. So let's hope we're changing that, right? (laughs) Right. Right. So we can start with the sexual health piece, right? Like you're saying, it's about blood flow. It's about vascular health, right? Our veins, that's the blood flow. Connected to that is blood sugar. So eating foods to keep our blood sugar balanced, right? Avoiding spikes and crashes, which is stuff we talk about here all the time. And you and I have talked about. Sleep, right? Which again, we have tons of episodes about sleep. And stress, managing our stress or stress hygiene, as many like to call it, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the elements doing like the heavy lifting when it comes to sexual health. Yeah. So what all of these things sort of have in common is a failure to maintain them, right? And a failure to maintain healthy blood flow, healthy cardiovascular function, healthy insulin response and blood sugar balance, right? That's what starts to steal healthy hormone levels. And that really is not age related. It's lifestyle related. And that can happen frankly, at any age, because we're seeing stress in particular impact people younger and younger in a way that we used to associate with people who are older. Definitely. So what this leads us to is that the lifestyle factors for a healthy heart are the lifestyle factors that are going to help us with our sexual health. Okay. And we did talk about a lot of this stuff. Our episode from February of 2023 this year was heart health is sexual health. So you can certainly go back to that episode for more on all of this, but like high level lifestyle factors for a healthy heart, eating for nutrition, right? And blood sugar balance and getting a good night's sleep, right? So for those, frankly, everything we talk about is eating for blood sugar balance. Good night's sleep. We have an episode called Sleep on It. That was an older one. And then we have an episode called Circa Your Circadian Rhythm. And then I know you're laughing. Do you like my catchy titles? (laughs) I do. (laughs) You do. We think they're funny. SEO and Google are not such big fans. So, you know. They're memorable. Right. Don't smoke. Technically, it says don't drink alcohol. But let's say minimize the alcohol. Fair. And that's connected to supporting detoxification pathways. So... Again, we have a couple episodes way back. I want to say this was like January of 2020, did an episode called Debunking Detox. And then more recently, we did an episode of Your Body's Daily Detox, 
right? So the detoxification that our body is doing all the time and supporting the liver. And then there's also sort of like a concentrated maybe seven-day detox are those two episodes. Next one is keeping your blood glucose in healthy ranges. So again, it's the nutrition pieces that we talk about all the time. You can go back to our episode called Life Hack Food Choices. That was probably in like the first 10 episodes of the show way back in 2019. And then the last piece here is maintaining a healthy body composition, which is frankly building muscle, right? Muscle dictates metabolism, right? We're going to come back to some building muscle things a little bit later. On the muscle front, we have an episode called The Right Time of Day to Exercise. And then we did a Q&A fitness edition that will help people with some of those elements. So the long and the short of it here, right? Heart health is sexual health. Metabolic health is sexual health. And these lifestyle factors, the same factors that are going to support our heart are the ones that support our hormones and our longevity. So the good news is we don't have to do extra different things. (laughs) (laughs) Balance. Exactly. And it allows us to say, if I'm concentrating on just a couple things, it's like big bang for the buck, right? It doesn't necessarily require biohacking to achieve the level of health and vitality and lifestyle that most people, I think, are looking for. Right. Makes sense. Okay. So let's talk about testosterone. Let's do it. All right. Testosterone is a hormone, which I think many of us know, but it's an androgen, which is a word that a lot of people hear but don't necessarily know what it means. (laughs) So androgens are hormones. Both male and female bodies have androgens. They are the kind of hormones, they're basically messengers that tell parts of the body to grow and get stronger. So for male bodies, androgens will help with things like growing facial hair and body hair. That's what makes your voice deeper in puberty. It also helps muscles get bigger. For female bodies, I know this isn't about women's health today, but for female bodies, (laughs) androgens are also about body hair. They also play a role in bone health too. So androgens are important. Testosterone is an androgen. It is the primary sex hormone for males. It's also an anabolic hormone, right? It's a building hormone. The production of testosterone decreases, or sorry, so it increases during puberty and then it decreases later in life. That can happen even as early as like, around age 30 or shortly after. And that decrease, okay, take a wild guess. How much percent per year do you think testosterone decreases? So while using your metric at 30, I'm guessing it's 2% per year going forward? So it's actually only 1% per year. Okay. Right? Which is also why I think people disproportionately think testosterone is the issue. Right. Because we think we lose it faster than we actually do. Now, 1% a year isn't nothing. (laughs) But that also because we're we're inundated with testosterone ads. So we think that everyone has this problem. Right. And then when testosterone starts to decrease, we can have other side effects that are not just physical, but emotional. Right. So certainly... Healthy testosterone levels support our sexual health, but healthy testosterone levels are connected to a whole lot more than that, okay? So healthy testosterone levels are connected to cognition. So like think memory and mental fitness. Our mental outlook, which has to do with, it can contribute to, you know, confidence and our mood, but even productivity and the ability to focus, And then connected to that is energy. So testosterone levels support energy, even at later decades of life. Is there a correlation with testosterone and fatigue? Yes. Generally, you're going to end up, as testosterone levels decrease, you would see an increase of fatigue. But do you mean like fatigue as in like a muscle that you're working fatigues out or in like daily fatigue of like a little tired, a little... Yeah. Daily fatigue, uh, like when you hit a certain age or you're not as active, it's almost like the male needs a siesta all of a sudden. Yes. Well, and speaking of that, we're going to come back to napping because sleep is so important. And 
we'll come back to this, but it turns out that it's not so much connected to circadian rhythm, but connected to actual like rest. So even if that rest is a nap. But yes, so testosterone levels are going to impact that energy day to day and how we feel and our ability to like even have that motivation to get up off the couch. Right. You know, and then by that token too, muscle mass. So healthy testosterone levels are crucial for maintaining muscle mass and therefore strength. It's also connected to bone mass, like bone mineral density. And then we get to libido, right? So it is connected to sex drive and sexual function, but not in the dramatic proportion that most people think, right? Because if you have, you know, amazing cardiovascular health and blood flow and metabolic health, you may not notice that 1% per year decrease in testosterone. Yeah. Or at least as dramatically. Right. Okay, so a couple tips for testosterone. A little caffeine with your workouts can support the workout and the testosterone. For men, I know you're taking notes. I like this. Okay. (laughs) All right. Resistance training, right? So lifting weights and HIIT workouts are best for men for that testosterone. I know we have a lot of female listeners, and I know we talk a lot about fitness and different types of workouts, and we have talked about with aging, and if we are cortisol dominant, right, with aging, a HIIT workout as your default is different for a female body with aging than it is for a male body with aging. So I want to be very clear, this is about male bodies (laughs) and testosterone with those HIIT workouts. Your waist circumference is a strong predictor of low testosterone. So as your waist circumference increases, it can be an indicator of low testosterone. And that can happen, by the way, in men as young as 30, right? There is some research that says that that testosterone decrease isn't really as noticeable until we're in our 40s. But I think it's more likely that by a male hitting 40 is more aware of those changes. And now you've had maybe eight to 10 years of a difference. And now you're looking at eight to 10% less testosterone than in your 20s. And you're like, why do I feel different? You know what I mean? Like, I think that's just what it takes for us to notice it. That's my opinion. That's not science, to be (laughs) clear. (laughs) Constant dieting. So, you know, having that- Fad dieting? Yeah, like the fad diets, like the gaining and losing, like that roller coaster of gaining right. and losing weight can influence testosterone levels in a negative way. So dieting and overeating can influence testosterone levels negatively. That's probably why you're not a fan of going extreme and taking steps progressively. Exactly. One of many reasons why. <laughs> right. We're coming back to the stress hygiene, right? So exercising and relaxation techniques both help with our stress, right? And cortisol levels are inversely associated with testosterone. So the higher our cortisol, the stress hormone, the lower the testosterone. This is an interesting dynamic here because we're talking about like eating going up and down, but don't we also, even though cortisol think bad, testosterone good, isn't it impacted how you need cortisol to spike the testosterone or kind of go back and forth, right? There's a correlation yes. between the two. Yes. I mean, and there's not all stress is bad, right? right? Cortisol is also the hormone that gets us out of bed in the morning. Right. Right. But when we are in a constant stress response and cortisol is high and always high, you don't have that ebb and flow, right? So it's about managing that stress. And making those things part of your regular routine, not just when we feel like we're stressed. I think that's a big mistake that people make is they think they're not stressed. And the body's physiological response to stress exists even when we don't mentally or emotionally think we're stressed. Mm, Good point. So you're saying people are in danger of adding too much stress if they don't think that they're doing enough? 100%. Are you yeah. familiar with uh, David Goggins' Ultraman? You only, yeah. when you think you've hit a wall, it's only 40%. You got another 60% right. to go, which that, there's a lot of guys out there who want to be the next David Goggins. Right. I mean, 
And again, like it depends on what most of us aren't living our lives in that way and doing the things that he's doing. Right. And I think that's part of the pros and cons of a lot of the ultra man things that are even in some of like the health professionals who have become influencers on social media and stuff like that, or celebrities that are doing a lot of these things. I mean, the reality is like their lives and livelihood depend on their bodies in a different way than us, or their commitment level to it is different than the average person. And so then going back to what you were saying before about finding the things that we can actually do sustainably is going to have a much bigger impact than if we go hardcore for a month or a couple months and then do nothing for years. Right. So it's about finding that optimal balance. When if you are going to go extreme, maybe it's like for a season instead of like continuously getting harder until right. you can't do anymore to right. failure. Right. And then the last piece on the testosterone tips is sleep duration. So sleep duration rather than circadian rhythm seems to be connected to healthier testosterone levels. So three hours of sleep seems to be what's needed for that. And by the way, we talked about this in the circadian rhythm episode, I think among other episodes where sleep cycles tend to be about 90 minutes. So if you can get three hours and two sleep cycles, right, and that's six hours, you might end up waking up from that and feeling better than if you had six and a half or seven hours of sleep and you're waking up in the middle of a sleep cycle. Right. The caveat to all of that is for most of us, we don't get in bed and then instantly we're sleeping and we count our hours of sleep from the moment we got in bed. Right. right? So even to get six hours of sleep, you might need to prepare for, you know, like. Eight or nine. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we tackled sexual health and testosterone. Questions? I know you've taken notes. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm noticing like a interesting circular here where like men generally right. <laughs> um, want to be kind of the the provider, the the best sexual male partner. So if testosterone is in tune with motivation and your motivation is to give her the best sex ever, then you're almost like trying to program yourself. But if you're having low testosterone, you might be sort of um, setting yourself up for failure in a suspicious cycle. Yeah. And, and the then, truth is what's actually going to contribute more to that sexual performance is the stress. Is the blood flow, the cardiovascular health, managing the stress, getting sleep, eating for nutrition and blood sugar balance. Right. And then instead of that holistic approach, we're becoming a society of just like, let me get the pill or buy the ad for testosterone. Right. Yeah. Right? I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we're going to get to some more like nutrition and fitness things, and then we're going to talk prostate. Okay. All right. So let's do that after a quick message from our partner for this episode. All right. Friends, we are our own partner for this episode. <laughs> I look at my notes and I'm like, oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you are a fan of Salad with a Side of Fries podcast and looking for how you can support us, We've got you covered with some awesome merch. Our brand new seasonal merch. Yeah, Keith is sporting it. So our brand new seasonal items are available now. We have a new tank that says you can't outrun your fork. <laughs> we have sweatshirts, a quarter zip, a cropped hooded sweatshirt. There's an ornament. We have a wine cooler bag, some kitchen things, lots of fun new items. So. If you're a fan of the show, show your love for the podcast and share if you are, there you go, Team Salad or Team Fries. So just head over to our website, asaladwithasideoffries.com slash merch and browse through the full collection. We did have some things this summer sell out. So if you see something, snag it before it's gone. The Salad with a Side of Fries mug might be perfect for you still this time of year. There's also the wine tumbler, which was a big hit. And the water bottle, all the things, perfect accessories for any podcast fan. So you get to take a piece of the podcast with you wherever you go. Maybe these are the best anchors also to remind you through the holiday season of your commitment to yourself and your health. 
So simply text the word FRIES, F-R-I-E-S, to 844-947-4846. You'll receive the link right to your phone. Check out all the Salad with a Side of Fries merch. Your purchase supports all the work we do here, shows your podcast pride, and maybe it sparks a conversation for you to pay it forward and inspire someone else to reclaim control of their health too. So again, you're going to text the word FRIES, F-R-I-E-S, to 844-947-4846. This is a toll-free number. Standard text and data rates may apply. All right. Jen, I got to ask you, since it's a yes. men, men's health episode in November, which side, male, female, not to be binary here, but which side is uh, the men typically on and which side, what team is the women usually on? As far salad as team fries. salad or team fries? Right. Um, across the board, there is a distinct affinity for team fries, but there have been a few people who are team salad. My sister is team salad. I think I'm team salad. Really? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. We might be split down the middle. I don't, we'll see. Tell us as you keep purchasing. It's really fun. <laughs> and then share it on social, obviously. Okay. So let's talk nutrition things that can specifically support men's health. Okay. We can also look at things that are specific to prostate health, right? So primary to that is lean body mass. So building muscle and building muscle also may have an influence on sexual health too. So nutrition for prostate health, maintaining lean body mass, building muscle, protein, zinc, B vitamins, vitamin D, and omega-3 essential fatty acids. And then we also know we talked about heart health right? Heart health and blood flow are also intimately linked here. And for those, it's B vitamins, in particular niacin, but we need all the B vitamins, plant sterols and antioxidants. So antioxidants in particular enable people to improve blood lipids, so fat in the blood, reducing LDL cholesterol and improving HDL cholesterol. So ones that you might look at are like Hawthorn berry, grapeseed extract, omega 3s, black seed oil. And a lot of those, by the way, we have done nutrition nuggets on, right? Obviously, this is not a complete list, <laughs> but it's a start. We'll also go through some other botanicals for prostate health in a second. You mentioned protein is your thing, oh, yeah. right? So let's talk protein for a second because not all protein is the same. Right. Tofu so, doesn't taste the same. Right. <laughs> Tofu actually, though, is a perfect protein, meaning it has all the essential amino acids. Right. A lot of the plant proteins do not have all the essential amino acids, right? So if we're choosing more of the plant protein, we want to balance. We also want to make sure that we're getting enough of the quality fats, the B vitamins, and the antioxidants, in particular, anthocyanidins, which are kind of antioxidants. We're going to talk about those more in a second. But on the protein front, how much protein is a proper serving at a meal for a male body? At a singular meal or the whole yes. day, just to clarify? Singular uh, meal. I don't know, four ounces on average, maybe? On average. Okay. So like four times three for a day. Okay. I'm guessing. Okay, proper serving of protein for a man, like male body. Again, I have to go biologically male, female, because, you know, right. we're talking biology here. Six to eight ounces at a meal, two to three ounces at a snack. Wow. So we're talking a minimum of 45 grams of protein for a meal. Well, can we clarify that I'm thinking a steak of protein, but you're thinking of all the different sources of protein? It doesn't matter. Yes. But like, the reality is if you're having steak, right. the amount of protein that you're getting from your broccoli or the potato with it is not really adding much to those the ounces of the steak. Well, when you tell me 40, I'm thinking I'm getting a tomahawk every day. So that's why I'm trying to clarify. Okay, 45 grams is the equivalent of a little more than six ounces. Oh, okay. Right? So each ounce of protein is about seven grams. If we're reading a food label and it's showing us grams, the way to convert that, like seven grams is like one ounce of a cooked meat. So okay. if you're looking at your steak is six ounces, and then you go to a protein shake and it says it has 12 grams, 
We're talking like less than two ounces in your protein shake. Right. It's confusing. <laughs> right? So I know. But the seven grams to an ounce is the easiest way so that you can put it in perspective. So understanding we have to have enough protein to meet the physical and metabolic demands and the balance of the amino acids, right? So we have essential amino acids. Remember, anytime we hear the word essential with a nutrient, it means our body can't make it. We have to take it or eat it, right? We have to consume it. So essential amino acids, amino acids are the building blocks of protein. Essential means that we have to get them through our food. Animal protein has all of the essential amino acids. Tofu has all the essential amino acids. An egg has all the essential amino acids. Lentils, nuts do not. Mm. So if you combine rice and beans, and when I say combine, they don't have to be, the thought used to be that they had to be at the same time together. Newer research says they don't as long as they're in the same day. But those two, between the rice and the beans, you get all the essential amino acids. But if you're only having one of those, or you're only eating certain plant proteins and not having a higher level of commitment to understanding how those amino acids balance, you are likely to notice a challenge or a difference when it comes to our prostate and testosterone and muscle mass and energy and cardiovascular health and all the things. I know you just said that uh, there's a new study that says if you have them at least in the same day, but is there things that happen when they're combined together that unlock different nutrients? Your body can use them. Like, I don't know that doctors would describe it this way, but my sort of like remedial way of describing it is like, your body can then do what it's got to do because all the pieces are there. Is Versus that what like bi bioavailability means? Yeah, bioavailability me is what's available for the body to use. Okay. So bioavailability is almost like how easily we can absorb something. So like a pill vitamin has less bioavailability because your body has to break down the pill if it even can get through this outer coating mm. compared to other forms of supplementation. So yes, there are certain kinds of foods that have better bioavailability than others. At the risk of like getting too in the weeds, six to eight ounces of protein at a meal, two to three ounces at a snack, eat throughout the day, and then you're probably good to go. And if you're focused on plant proteins, then you need a greater level of commitment to understanding those amino acid profiles. Same with vegans, I'm assuming, right? Like they yeah, struggle for exactly. the protein consumption. Right. And Many people who are vegans will say they don't, right? But it's a greater level of commitment. It's more focus on the variety. And then also, if what you're choosing are the processed man-made meat substitutes, we're into the land of ultra-processed food rather than the land of whole real nutrition. Right. Okay, let's talk physical fitness for a second. What muscle works the hardest in your body? Pop quiz. The brain. The brain. So technically, the brain is mostly well, fat, so it's not really it's a not muscle. A, right. Sorry, you're right. Muscle, not organ. Then I'm assuming the largest ones, right? Like your quads or your hamstrings, maybe? Right. We would think so. So quads are you know, your largest muscle group, but the muscle that works oh. the hardest, what? Well, would you consider the heart a muscle or an organ or exactly. both? Exactly. The heart is a muscle. Okay. So the heart does the most physical work of any muscle in the body, right? Think about it. It is pumping continuously your entire life. Yeah. It is said that the heart pumps about 2,000 gallons of blood a day. Wow. I mean, that's a lot of work. Yeah. No vacations. Right. Okay. Going to the leg thing that you were talking about, you know, your quads, leg strength, is a key indicator of vascular and heart muscle health. Because the blood's got to pump nutrients to those muscles? So it's not totally clear. The research isn't 100% clear on the mechanism, but yes, most likely it's a function of that blood flow and powering those muscles. 
And then there's also some research, which a lot of people have heard, that there's a correlation between grip strength and cognitive health. Mm. And that's another one where it's not totally clear of what the connection is or why that is, but it's those things are correlated. A future episode. <laughs> right. And frankly, it needs research that I can't really do. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> people far smarter than I, I'm sure, I hope, are trying to figure that out. <laughs> coming, coming soon. Right. So bottom line, when we think about these together, right? So work your quads, right? Support the heart, grip strength, protein, antioxidants, all the things together is also our focus for longevity. So again, we don't have to do different things for one thing than for another. Everything is foundational and supports everything because it's all connected. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, prostate. Should we do a little biology? (laughs) Let's do it. Okay. (laughs) All right. Prostate, the prostate, is a small little gland that is located like right below the bladder. And then It's sort of like a donut shape, the prostate, and it surrounds a tube called the urethra. So the prostate's job is essentially creating ejaculate, and that feeds sperm. So it helps to make sure that sperm are healthy. So (laughs) I I have to admit, so I asked ChatGPT how to explain the prostate to a 12-year-old. A shower head. A right. shower head, a strong shower head. <laughs> well, that's not the prostate, but right. so it says, I just have to read this because it's so funny. So it says, the prostate has an important job and the job is to help make a special liquid that's part of what comes out when a boy has a baby making moment. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So as we age, there can be changes in the prostate because of its location right, where it's around the urethra and right below the bladder, that's where we see the impact on urine, right? Mm -hmm. So over time, as we age, and for this, it's usually starting usually around age like 35 or so, the prostate can change in shape, size, and kind of like flexibility or like suppleness is what they say. And then depending on those changes of size, shape, and suppleness, then it can impact urinary health and sexual health. Okay? So changes that you might notice. This is where your shower head comes in. (laughs) Okay? (laughs) So a weak stream, right? Frequent urination, straining to urinate, incomplete emptying. So like you think you're done and then you're not pain or discomfort in the lower back, the pelvis, or even during urination, blood in the urine or semen, erectile dysfunction, and then similar to, you know, the frequency of urination, even changes in the habits. Like, you know, are you waking up a bunch of times in the middle of the night? You know, those kinds of things. Now, I say all of this with the caveat That just because you experience some of those things does not mean inherently that you have a problem or that you have prostate cancer. Like full stop, that's not what I'm saying, (laughs) right? Right? What it does tell us is that there may be something going on and we want to go for screening. We want to have regular screening because the way our healthcare system works is that it's all about early detection. Right. Right right? The kind of screening processes that we do and that are covered by insurance and all that is early detection more than it is preventive health. Everything we've been talking about as far as taking care of, you know, our physical health, our mental health, our metabolic health, the cardiovascular health, that's your preventive care, right? And then awareness of what happens with testosterone and awareness of what happens with the prostate is what allows us to then have that early detection and to be aware of what's happening and potentially do some prevention, right? So I'll talk about some botanicals in a second for those kinds of things. With screening, you know, they may test PSA, which is prostate-specific antigen, right? That's a blood test. There may be what they call DREs or digital rectal exams, which I feel like is what everybody talks about, right? You want to talk to your healthcare provider. This is the time where, like you were saying before, Especially, you know, people can not share 
or right. pretend like something's not really happening, we want to know. We want to have those conversations. And maybe you want to even just get a baseline. Maybe you are on the younger end and you're like, you know what? I kind of want to know. Like, will your doctor help you get some baseline information? Right. You know? and, and how often? Like in your annual physical? Yeah. And again, that is sort of person to person depending on your age and other risk factors that your healthcare provider would be able to direct you on. You know, everybody's a little bit different in that way. But I think regular care and screening and your own awareness of what's happening or changing are the critical pieces. Yeah. Right? So the prostate is connected to a hormone called DHT or dehydrotestosterone. And so that hormone impacts prostate health. Antioxidants, like we talked about antioxidants with our protein, antioxidants like grapeseed extract can benefit the prostate, even for men in their 20s and 30s. Antioxidants support also our cardiovascular system, blood flow, right? And neutralizing free radicals. We've done nutrition nuggets on antioxidants and understanding free radicals and that kind of stuff. But it can also, that neutralizing free radicals can impact aging and prostate health. Right. So the good news, like I keep repeating, the good news is that it's a lot of the same things for everything. Right. Yeah. If we tick a few of these fundamental boxes, we're covered. And then, depending on what we experience and what we notice, we can maybe get into some more targeted approaches, depending on what's happening. And just have no stress. Right. Exactly. Live in a bubble, right. not on planet Earth. Maybe go to Mars. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so some botanicals that could help or support prostate health. Betocytosterols. So there's an enzyme in these kind of botanicals that are responsible for converting testosterone to DHT. And it's that DHT that's supporting our prostate health. Can I pause there for one sec? Yes. With the DHT, you hear as a guy get all these ads for like, hair loss and then DHT is the culprit. Yes. And then if you have too much testosterone, then the DHT kills your hair. And it's like, if you're not trying to be a bodybuilder, you don't need all this, right? Right. So, well, you may not need all of it, but there are certainly botanicals that can help support the prostate health and the hair loss. So for example, saw palmetto is in a lot of men's health formulas. It's also in a lot of hair growth formulas for women. So caveat to that also for women, because of its connection to all these hormones and the way it functions in the body, there's some concern with kind of mixed research of whether or not saw palmetto can impact efficacy of hormonal birth control. Mm. So everybody needs to make their own decisions and talk to their doctors I'm going to keep my thoughts to myself for this moment. <laughs> and <laughs> I will direct research. you back also to, we did two episodes in August about hormonal birth control. So you can go back to those two. Okay, some other botanicals for prostate health. So pumpkin seed extract. Pumpkin seed extract aids in prostate health by promoting normal urinary flow and helps maintain bladder comfort. Zinc citrate is a key player in the mechanisms behind prostate cellular health and healthy testes. And then grapeseed extract is one of those antioxidants that enhances blood flow, you know, and then therefore blood flow to the prostate gland and can help deliver nutrients and oxygen to the tissue. Stinging nettle is another one. So stinging nettle, most of the time it's like stinging nettle root extract is what's in there and it's touted for prostate health because it can benefit both prostate cell health and urinary comfort and bladder function. It can also support sexual health and libido. So stinging nettle may have a positive effect on male hormone levels as it contains compounds that promote healthy responses to DHT. And then again, we're back to antioxidants and some, even some adaptogenic herbs and botanicals are helpful like ashwagandha and things like that. Again, going back to what's the word? Stress, right? <laughs> <laughs> so long and the short of it on this, I'm going to put a link in the show notes to a handful of supplements that doctors I work with typically recommend for men's health. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and that is because 
there's a lot of ingredients here. And I am now doing a lot of trainings around supplementation. And one of the things that's really interesting about the industry and research is that there are, in order to see a benefit from supplements, it requires often specific versions of an ingredient or specific doses of an ingredient or a combination of ingredients in order to get the benefit of one. So even if you wrote down all of these botanicals, that's not to say that just going to the store and taking 85 different things would give you the benefit that you're looking for and you'd probably end up spending a fortune. And it's relative to each person is different combinations, I'm assuming. Right, exactly. And so for some people, it might be more of a focus on the you know, metabolic health and the blood sugar support and omega-3s. And for some people, they might be looking for that you know, specific prostate support, or we're going to take a focus on the stress management. Now, having said all of that, you cannot supplement your way out of poor nutrition. So while I'm giving you some links, and then you can go to your healthcare provider and you can go to your pharmacist and decide what is the right fit for you, understand that those fundamentals are still the same, right? So maybe that's sort of a good place to like wrap this up. Fundamentals, the fitness right? We have to do something daily to move our bodies and build muscle. Nutrition. We want to focus on protein, low glycemic impact to keep our blood sugar balanced, right? We want to know our body fat percentage. Focus on that body composition, building lean muscle, removing fat, managing our stress, focusing on sleep, and eliminating the smoking, minimizing the alcohol, if not eliminating the alcohol. Two more <laughs> thoughts. Awareness is key. Right. Consistency is king. I love that. All right. Final thought from you. I feel like this was confronting. <laughs> no, this is, I think this is really good. A lot of guys probably need this to be spoon fed and also simplified because there's a lot of information out there. And not to say that we're simple, but making it easier for us to understand the nuances, especially that it's not everyone just take testosterone that it's complex and unique to each individual is very helpful. Awesome. And I think a lot of times what we think is testosterone might not actually be. Right, exactly, as we've learned. Yeah, awesome. All right, so that brings us to our nutrition nugget. On Friday, we're talking about peanut butter because November is Peanut Butter Lovers Month. And I will admit I am 100% a peanut butter lover. I have had times in my life where I have been known to sit down with a jar of peanut butter and a spoon, right? <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is also an interesting food because it really runs the spectrum from almost whole food to ultra processed food mm. and therefore can have very different health implications. And yet they're all called peanut butter. So we're going to talk about it on Friday. Make sure wherever you're listening now, click the plus sign or the follow button, and then your app will remind you when the Nutrition Nugget goes live. As always, everybody, I am your host, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram or all social media. I'm at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Website is a salad with a side of fries. Dot com. You can find merch there. You can contact us there. Really, you can also contact through social media. Whatever platform makes you happy, send a message. I want to hear your takeaways, your ideas, your questions. This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me as your health coach. Keith, thank you again for joining me. Thank you, Jen. Absolutely. We'll have to do this again. Absolutely. Okay. Of course, everybody, if you are not already, join our membership program by going to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries to show your support for this podcast, this community, and most importantly, support your health. You'll get this week's recipe for the peanut butter truffles in honor of November being Peanut Butter Lovers Month, and the article, How Metabolic Health Impacts Men's Sexual Health, in honor of Movember for Men's Health. So until next week, and really always... Remember that most of what we've talked about this week for men's health is truly human health. And a focus on metabolic health, stress management, blood flow, and cardiovascular health will support everyone, even the elements that are uniquely male. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. 
Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform. Share us with a friend and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.